What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you kind of the second part of the video for my previous Zuck guide. Uh, this is going to be for hard mode. It's going to be very similar, so I would highly suggest checking out that video because it'll have a lot more information. This is just going to be mostly a talk through. But yeah, hopefully you guys can use this method to get your upgraded Zuck kit. All right, guys, so before I get any further into this video, I want to show you guys how to move and attack at the same time while on revolution. Um, you don't want revolution to be casting your abilities for you. Um, and if you don't have keybinds set up, it can be kind of awkward to attack and move at the same time. So hopefully what I'm about to show you helps you out. So um, I'm out here in the desert, as you can see, because it's a big open area with no like random obstructions in the way. It's one of the few places in the game that seems to be like this. Uh, you could you could practice this on the combat dummies in Wars Retreat, but um, it's not really relatable to the actual fight itself because during the fight itself, what you have to do is like walk around the giant. This so pretend this is a giant pillar. You have to be walking around the pillar kind of like this while attacking it, and um, you can't really do that in Wars Retreat. So hopefully this shows it a little bit better. But basically, what I'm going to be showing you here is how to attack it while clicking on your abilities. Obviously, you can if you use keybinds. You can like move and attack at the same time like this um you know what i mean like you can move and attack losslessly as long as you're like spam clicking to move as you can see but if you're moving around while clicking your abilities you'll probably look at something a little bit more like this so we target it and then we move and you click an ability and it'll stop for a second and then it'll click an ability and it'll stop for a second and moving like this is perfectly fine for the final phase but what you don't want to be doing, let me just take off my lantern so I don't uh, randomly waste all my ectoplasm. Um, let me run away. But yeah, if you're on revolution and attacking it, what'll end up happening, as you can see here, is you turn and then you wait a tick and then you attack. And then you turn and then you wait a tick and then you attack. And if you do this, it will most likely be too slow, which is why it's really important to learn how to like click and attack at the same time, kind of like this, as you can see. Um, even if you're not doing it perfectly and you are kind of stalling out for like that, for like that one tick there where your character's stopping, that will be fine. But yeah, you really do not want to be doing the thing where you're turning, waiting, and then attacking because that will get you killed. Um, yeah, so hopefully this shows you guys how to attack and move at the same time. You basically just click on your ability and then move, and you click on your ability and then move, and then click on your ability and then move. And um, yeah, that's going to be much better. Uh, there goes my ectoplasm. But yeah, that's going to be much better at dealing with the um, the mechanic than trying to use revolution itself. Because like I said, revolution is just super bad at attacking and moving at the same time. As you can see, it's just so slow and awful. And uh, yeah, you definitely do not want to be doing that because you'll have a bad time. And uh, the last thing that you want is to get to the end of the fight and then die, obviously. Because that would uh, probably just like waste 20 to 30 minutes. Today, I'm going to be doing a little hard mode Zuck talk through type thing. Um, I would highly suggest watching the video I just did about normal mode if you want a little bit more detailed explanation about the luring and the waves and stuff like that. Hard mode is basically the exact same thing. It's just the monsters have twice as much HP and they hit a little bit harder. So uh, it's really, you know, that's a better video to watch um, because I want to keep this one as short as possible in the interest of time. So, um, yeah. So you can see here, this is the gear that I'm using. It's a very standard setup. Um, I'm using the Reaver's Ring over the Tuckle Zo just because I'm, you know, too lazy to go charge it. And uh, you'll usually go through like almost a full ring per hard mode run. So I don't know, it's kind of annoying to have to do that. It is good, but the Reaver's Ring is also insanely good with Necromancy. And then the inventory, again, it's a very standard looking inventory. The only special item I have here is this Stamina Pot. You make this with an Arbuck and a Super Energy and um, <clears throat> basically this just gives you infinite run energy for six minutes which can be really useful for the final phase especially if it's your first run um as for the buffs we're just using darkness overloading um you know weapon poison sorrow and soul split and then you are going to have to be praying throughout these fights but it's really not too bad uh, and then one thing i want to talk about here before i start actually is going to be turn on the voiceover uh, the voiceover here is really really nice if you're like learning this because the firewall that comes across the screen uh, has this voice line every time he does it so it makes it way easier to tell when it's happening so i would just highly suggest turning the voiceover on because it makes this way easier 
So yeah, make sure you have hard mode checked and then start this up. Interesting. You return. So the first two waves are very Drawing easy. I might speed these up. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the first waves you could kind of just revote through them like they're nothing. Uh, these guys don't really hit that hard. You can see this is the first flame wall and that is the voice line he does. There's a couple different things. He'll say like the skies burn and like some other stuff like fall into ash or whatever. And uh, yeah, there's just a really loud voice line if you have the uh, voice lines turned on every time he does the um, the flame wall, which makes it super easy to tell when it's going to happen. And uh, yeah, it definitely helps a lot when you're learning, especially. So for the upcoming wave, the third wave, you definitely want to be using the lure spot right here for the third wave. Fight worm or crawl and the lure die. spot here, as you can see, it'll get all of these melee guys stuck and they won't attack you. And then you just have to kill this, this ranger here, which is very easy. But um, you don't really want to be tanking too many of these melee guys. Um, see, there's another firewall. But yeah, you don't really want to be tanking multiple of the melee guys at the same time. They can really hit hard. They can hit up to 3,500 in hard mode. As you can see, you can tank one of them, and usually it's not a problem. It doesn't, like, it doesn't usually max hit, but sometimes it'll max hit. And you definitely don't want to take, like, two 3500s in a row. Like, it's just not great. But yeah, you can tank one of them, but don't take multiple. You don't have to. So now we are going to have the first Igneous Wave. The Igneous Waves in hard mode are a little bit different. As you can see, it'll spawn one of each Igneous type monster, but they're actually easier to deal with than normal mode. All we do here is we attack and stun this uh, Melear, and then you can see how I lure this guy in by walking far enough over to the uh, side here to start luring him in. I would probably pray range against these guys because uh, they can hit really hard. But yeah, then we just break his armor with bloat, or uh, you can use Finger of Death as well to break it. But yeah, just break his armor. And uh, one little tip here is right before you kill him, you can actually use Devotion and extend it as you surge across. I didn't get the extension, but as you surge across, you can extend Devotion and then pray magic and then walk behind this guy here. And as you can see, um, you're pretty much protected from all of the magic damage now, and uh, you really just have to reveal this guy down. You can see we did get a flame wall here, and all we do is walk to the side, and uh, it's really easy to deal with. But yeah, then we just walk over here to Zuck. Before we hit the button, you do want to build up to 100%. You might have to use some defensives or something, but we're at 100%, so we're going to use Living Death and an Adrenaline Potion. And then that'll make it so we can just Death Skulls this guy very easily. You can also Vulm Bomb him if you want. <clears throat> Probably worth doing. And then maybe use like a Finger of Death here to finish it. And we use the second Death Skulls. Kind of sucks, but not a big deal here. So all we do for this is uh, we're going to Threads of Fate this. So Threads of Fate here. And then we should be able to easily kill all these things with a Threads of Fate. As you can see, we'll Death Skulls again apparently. And then uh, you have a lot of time to deal with this. Uh, Threads of Fate will uh, usually carry you as long as you manually cast like one Volley of Souls on three or four of the targets. But yeah, then we just do the same thing here. We go over here into our lure spot, and then we just revo. And then we just have to deal with one Jad. The Jads in this have 100,000 HP. They are a little bit more difficult to deal with, but you can use something like Invoke Death on them to make them quite a bit faster. So that's probably worth doing for the Jads in hard mode.
All right, so you can see we dealt with the uh, ranger wave pretty easily. All you had to do for this was really just pray range and you'll be fine. This one last guy over here in the corner though is kind of a problem. As you can see, he's not very stacked up. But sometimes he'll like stack up to like 250 if you're like really slow or something. So uh, yeah, definitely be careful with this ranger in the back because he can randomly just stack up super high and hit like 4Ks on you if you're not praying range. So uh, you can like use devotion or reflect on him very easily. But yeah, then after you finish the second ranger wave, you're just going to have another igneous wave, which again is very easy. It's the same as all the other ones. Rise, of the kill. Yeah, we're just going to go over here, stun this guy, and then uh, lure this guy closer, like I said before. So for this next challenge, we are definitely going to want to have Death Skulls active. So what we do here is we just Vuln him, Death Skulls him, and then you can use a Finger of Death and then another Finger of Death, and usually that'll kill him. Um, like the Death Skulls and two Finger of Deaths will generally just kill him, but then we want to go back into the Jad lure. Over here, we want to lure the Jad. And basically all we do here is we kill the um, the Meliar here that's about to spawn. We kill this big guy. And then we go and deal with the Jad right away. Just so this mage doesn't pull us and lure us. So kill that guy and then go into Jad. You can tank all the hits from these other guys. It's really no big deal. If anything does happen, you can use like Reflect, I guess. Maybe use like a camel and eat if you have to. It's really no big deal. I didn't have a death skulls for this, so it was kind of slow. And now we are going to be doing the mage waves. So just pray magic for these waves and you should be fine. We just go back to our lure spot and we play magic. Dodge this wall and apparently we're reconjuring here, which is completely grief to me, but okay. So if you do get a vent here, don't be afraid to use uh, devotion on these. My reconjuring grief to me and I guess I didn't kill this bird, which is really annoying, but it doesn't really matter. As you can see, we can tank so much damage with the uh, vent, uh, with the uh, devotion here. And then before we go out to kill this guy here, you can use like reflect and then threads of fate. And then just threads of fate on this guy. Maybe manually cast a finger with threads and you should be able to kill like almost all of these guys. And with minimal amount of eating, you know, I didn't have to eat it all. You should be able to deal with pretty much all of these waves by just praying the correct thing. The ghost should give you enough HP uh, to just fully sustain you, basically. And this is like the worst lure of all time, but... Yeah, the ghost should like sustain your HP here pretty easily. And then again, after you kill the bird, just go back over here. So much like before, this ranger here will be stacking up pretty high sometimes. So definitely be careful, like make sure he's not like randomly stacked up to 250 and like hitting like a 3000 on you or something. But uh, yeah, I mean, usually it's not too big of a deal. I am actually going to take death skulls off my bar here. And I'll show you why I'm doing that in a second. But yeah, you could use reflect. You could see he's stacked up to like 200, um, 200 points here. So definitely like use reflect and pray range against this guy because he can hit really hard on you. The skies burn. 
But yeah, and it's just another igneous wave. Yeah, that was in the fire. Attack. Interesting. Um, and then same thing as before, just stun this guy, run over here. And the reason I'm taking Death Skulls off my bar here is because you don't want to blow all of your adrenaline on Zuck here because you do need to be 100% for the uh, the challenge. This is the only challenge that's actually like kind of annoying that is actually hard to deal with, I would think. But, uh, you know, as long as you don't troll yourself, you should be fine. So I like to use Living Death here when I'm killing the Mage, uh, and that's just to regain some of my adrenaline here, because you do not want to use your, um, you really don't want to be using your, um, what's it called, your Replenishment Potion here. So I am going to hit the button, Death Skulls, and then try to get through this without using all of my adrenaline. I have 12 stacks, so I can use one of these. But as you can see, now I'm going to use freedom. Try to build up to 100% here. So you can see I potioned up to 100, and now we're going to resonance this first hit. And then barricade this one. And this should be the best way to deal with it. You just have to resonance one of the hits and then barricade. You can also use turtling and barricade all of them. But uh, I mean, I'm too lazy to repurk my gear. Once you kill that challenge, very quickly try to get to your Jad spot. If you're not quick about it, you can see the Jads could uh, lure in properly. But as you can see, as long as you're quick, you'll only have to deal with one Jad at a time. And there's nothing else attacking you with the Jad, so it's very easy to deal with. And you could uh, Death Skulls it or something, but I'll save the Death Skulls for another one. You can see, we can easily kill this guy. And then we can just invoke on this guy and cast our Death Skull. And we're just uh, never using adrenaline, apparently. Okay, as you can see, as long as you get to the spot relatively quickly, you only have to deal with one Jad at a time. So it's nothing like too hard to deal with. And uh, we just killed 100. Huge. And then we're going to invoke death on this guy. And uh, only get Praise Rangers, I guess. You. So now, depending on if you want to get a 1 cycle or a 2 cycle for Hurricane, you can Rise use Living Death here. Happen. I would probably invoke Death for Hurricane, and then um, definitely throw your Vuln Bomb on him. Or not, I guess. But you don't have to uh, 1 cycle this guy if you don't want. When you get this, literally just run either Four north, south, east, or west. Necromancy has such short range, it's very terrible. As you can see, Hurricane is kind of annoying, uh, especially with Necromancy, because it has such short range that um, yeah, it could kind of be a grief. I'm not really used to doing this with Necromancy. Yeah, I would probably use Living Death for this guy. Um, it's probably worth it. As you can see, we didn't get the one cycle here, obviously, but you would probably be able to get it with Living Death or a tier 95 spec. Yeah, we did about half the damage there. So you can see Hurricane comes back. Definitely be sure to Vuln him. That skulls him. You can use the tier 95 or the tier 90 spec here. It's probably worth it. But, as you can see, you kind of just dodge all this stuff pretty easily. You probably want to be standing, like, super close to Hurricane, just so you can run like this and you don't get pulled into range. But yeah, as you can see here, we're just going to be spamming Finger of Deaths. And to hopefully kill it. There we go. So we killed it there. Um, I would probably Living Death on him. It's probably worth it. And then we're going to go over here to Zuck. And just start building. Maybe you want to eat up to 100% here. The and then just uh, pray melee for this guy. Break me. 
of freedom with the first attack. Wait till he does his second attack. I'm gonna get to 100%. Yeah. And surge once. Then surge a second time. Now we're just gonna manually be casting Death Skulls. Surge one more time or play to dive away from this. Try not to get hit by it, because it is kind of a grief. You will have to freedom again if you get hit by it. You can reflect this big hit if you want. It only hits like up to a 5,000, so it's really no big deal. But as you can see, I got hit by one of those geysers or the quakes or whatever you call it, and it does put a magic bleed on you, so make sure you're using freedom against that. And now we get stunned here. Even if you wasted your freedom, you can see you have enough time to run to the next area. Even if you do get stunned. Just make sure you're eating up if you do get hit. And then just make sure you're stunning this guy, maybe finger of death like I said. And then just target Zuck so you're facing the correct direction. So you could surge to this guy and then just bloat him. To break his igneous. These are just normal igneous monsters. They're very weak, so you don't have to do anything crazy to them. They're very like simple. And then same thing, play to dive to this last guy and stand in the thingy. And he is very easy to kill. And then just uh, make sure you're vulning here. Hit the little button. And you can Come death skulls. Make sure you hit the button. <laughs> and then once you get Zuck to 100k, it will be the final phase, which you need the stamina pot for. The final phase is pretty easy as long as you know how to attack and move at the same time, which can be kind of tricky, I suppose, for some people. But yeah, it's usually not too bad. So you get to 100k, try to drink your stamina pot here if you need to. And then you can just put on Soul Split. So what we do here is we move, you click the thing and attack, and then we move, and you click the thing and attack. And this is how you do it with Revolution. You just click the thing, use an ability, and then move. And then basically just this. And then for the first one here, see how we kill the pillar? Now we can use Resonance, and he's going to shoot a big ball at us. And he won't shoot any of those blobs at you. But you can see Resonance fully blocks the ball. But you want to start moving early because they they will come as soon as he shoots the thing and don't be afraid to eat up so for the next one you can actually use uh like reflect here and reflect will make this hit not very hard um see 7500 and then you just eat up again and if anything bad happens just keep running around and eating like i just did I made a few mistakes there, it was kind of weird necromancy doing it with revolution to be honest. But don't be afraid to just not attack it and eat up, like you could see. And you can just like run around and do nothing. And you can do what I'm doing here where you're like clicking an ability, and then moving and clicking ability, move, that kind of thing. You can see we killed the pillar here, and now he's going to shoot another ball at us. And we just use resonance for it. And you can see we used uh, Death Skulls there, so it will kill it very quickly. And if this happens, you can use a this um, Power Burst of Vitality. And as you can see here, the Power Burst will make it so it only hits a 15k on your like 25k HP. So it's really not too bad. And then we just continue along here, killing this stupid thing. And just like that, you get the perfect run. Um, 
was like a 30 minute run kind of slow like i'm not definitely not doing it super fast or anything like that but as you can see uh, if you do make mistakes you could just like pause on that pillar and eat up just like keep running and eating running and eating and then uh you know eventually you will be fine but um yeah just make sure you're using one of these defensives or i mean like reflect or resonance or like the vitality you could use like barricade i guess but it wastes too much adrenaline but yeah just make sure you're using something to block the hit usually between resonance reflect and the power burst you could usually cycle all of those and uh yeah just like that pretty easy and then you could see here there's um <laughs> two zucks in the chair and one on the ground so just like that guys you could then use all of your zuck capes on each other and make the cool one and not be a pleb Thanks for watching guys. If you guys use this method to get your upgraded Zuck Cape, let me know in the comment section below. And if you made it this far in the video, uh, definitely drop a like on it. It does help promote the channel quite a bit. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.